What's up everybody? How are you? Today we are learning the molar technique. The molar technique. Now right off the bat, you're not going to see it. I'm not going to show it to you because that's what everybody does. They jump on YouTube. There's a thousand lessons on YouTube on the molar technique. Some of them are great. Some of them are fantastic and excellent and some of them are bad. But what most people do who watch them to learn it, this is what they do. They watch it for a second, they go and they pick up their stick and go, oh God, I got it, I got the molar technique, I got it. And then all of a sudden, they've got an injury or they just don't really have it, all right? Before we even touch the technique, you have to earn the right to get there. And you have to earn that right by knowing who and what the molar technique are. So we're gonna start with that right there. Sanford Augustus Mola was born in 1886 in Albany, New York, and he died in 1960. He was an American rudimental drummer. Now what that means is he was one of those guys way back in the day who walked around with a big old drum hanging on him and playing all the time. He was an educator and he was the father of the molar tech Technique. That's what the molar is. It's not just something you just try and do. Because if you do it wrong, you're going to hurt your hand. Everybody falls into this one bad habit with the molar technique. And I have never, never, never seen it addressed in a YouTube video or a molar lesson before. Okay? Now, back to Gus. Gus Molar was a rudimentary, a rudimentary drummer. All rudiments on this big drum. He promoted good playing, learning the basics. Such a dedicated educator that once he walked from Connecticut to Boston over a 10 day period for I think it's 10 to 12 hours a day playing rudiments. The man on his two feet, 130 miles over 10 days, 10 hours a day. That's all he did for 10 days to promote drumming. 1886. To 1960 okay now if we jump ahead a bit he had a student his student's name was the legendary Jim Chapin if you don't know who Jim Chapin is pause my video right now and go watch something on Jim Chapin he's out there he's no longer with us uh, but fortunately Jim had a student that student was again the legendary ambassador of drumming, Dom Famulero. Uh, Dom Famulero is a massive, incredible educator, and he is the world-renowned educator and ambassador of drumming. Dom Famulero used to teach at a store called the Long Island Drum Center in Long Island, New York. When I was around 19 years old, I was lucky enough to go and take lessons for about three to four months every week from Dom. I had seen him do a clinic at Sam Ash on Queens Boulevard, and I was blown away. This cat was incredible. And years had gone by from when I saw this first clinic, and then I had just heard that, oh yeah, he, I, I was talking, and I was like, I seen this guy, Don Famulero, years ago, man, he was incredible. Oh yeah, he gives lessons at the Long Island Jump Center. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. Hello, do you give blah, blah, blah? Yep. So. I had the privilege, the honor, of studying with Don Famulero. And one of the first things he teaches you in your lesson, without even telling you you're learning the molar technique, is talks about your wrist motion and this wrist pop. And that, that right there, that's the molar technique. Breaking it down to its essence. That motion is the molar technique, okay? So let's start talking about the technique now because that's why we're watching this video, okay? Now, before we start learning the technique, we have to talk about the bad aspects and here's why. There are videos out there from famous drummers who do the molar technique and right off the bat, they show you this, this approach. Let's look at that from the side. Now here's the deal with that. Everybody watches that. They watch it. 
They just see that quick motion. They don't pay attention to the specific words. They're not focusing, focusing on the fingers. Now, this sitting at your drum, making this big motion, you're not going to do this around your kit. This is a motion of development, first of all. It's to get you to understand how the whipping motion, which is the other big mistake that people hear. They hear whipping motion and they think, whack, I've got to snap my arm out and they hurt themselves. So right off the bat, when you see this motion and you're holding it in your regular fulcrum with your thumb and forefinger and you are coming down and slamming, you are sending massive, massive shock into your fingers, into your knuckles, into your wrist, into your ulnar nerve because of the way you're coming down and the position of the curve of your wrist. So bad, 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 bad molar. That's not the molar technique. Now, when you do a full power stroke like this, it is primarily almost like the pinky fulcrum. You know, you can, you, your hand is still holding the stick, your middle finger is still there, your other finger is still here, but it's, it's this area here where it's resting. So there's no shock in your other fingers. Look, I can keep my whole hand open. Okay? So that full range molar. Let's get back to our normal fulcrum. Let me stop slamming my drum because that's not the point of it. It's just to understand if we minimize this. Let's start minimizing. Reducing that motion. So let's say instead of whip, which is whoosh, hard and violent, let's say a soft whip. The rubber pencil, that fluid, loose, light motion. Okay, your wrist goes up, your wrist goes down. This is not your hand going up and your hand going down. This is your wrist popping up and your wrist coming down. Wrist up, wrist down, wrist up, wrist down, wrist up, wrist down. So again, thinking about that motion, right? Instead of coming all the way here, like this, let's bring it down midway, mid molar. So here's a mid stroke, right? If we go, but we don't have to do this pendulum ridiculous thing. Let's just take it from here. Mid molar. That snap, 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 snap. See how my hand is up and it comes back down? I don't go. It's. So if I'm gonna do a full molar, applying a full molar, it's not this, remember, it's just. You're just bringing your stick up to the height, medium molar. Low molar. And when you really want to get it, it's just that tiny, tiny little motion between your hand, your wrist, and your fingers. And that's when you start mastering the molar technique. Now, you're not learning the molar technique just to go, I could do that all by myself with my wrist. What you want to do with the molar technique, what the molar technique is for, is to create that constant type of emotion, that constant type of motion, okay? And how that works is. The wrist. Now the way it's originally explained by, by Gus Mola, if you're in, in your traditional grip and you have your stick in this hand and he's in his pinky grip because when he did it, that's how he would hold his stick in that pinky grip. Your hand is coming down 
and the butt is the stick, the butt, the back end of the stick comes up. The hand comes back up, it resets the wrist, it comes down, it strikes. For the second strike, the butt of the stick comes up. The hand comes back up and it resets and comes down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. We minimize the motion to a mid molar. We go to a low molar. Down and butt up. Down, butt of the stick up. Down, butt of the stick up. Down, butt of the stick up. The wrist comes up, down. Then you strike. Down, this is your stroke. Your hand comes up for a stroke. It doesn't stay like this, okay? Then you reset it, you get used to that motion, and then you have to focus on the sound. It's the <laughs> creating that element of a single stroke. with one hand. That's the molar technique. A very important, key, vital piece of information in molar technique is your finger placement on the stick when you're doing the technique. Now, as I mentioned just before, that, that full molar, that power molar, you don't want to focus that on your, your forward fingers and your forward grip because it's way too much shock to come in. And that's that big rim shot motion, the big rock uh, uh, strike. That's really what that is. And, and it, if you are the big rock player, then learn that molar. Learn that because that's going to help you. If you're just coming down and slamming your drum like this, then you are doing much more and more damage to your, your arm and your fingers and your wrist. So if you're the big rock drummer, really focus on that. And again, don't, don't do that big, ridiculous, over-the-shoulder stuff. You're using and wear and tear and so much stuff that you're going to need for, for a long time. But finger placement, as I mentioned, that big power one, you know, focus your grip more in that area. Try it when you're just sitting there. Just wrap your pinky around the stick and then lightly put everything else there. Keep your thumb in its normal position all across your hand, normal grip, but focus that pinky on your hand and when you start to think about it and you get it, now I want you to think about this, the wrist pop. Instead of lifting your hand all the way up and then pushing your wrist up, just think of taking your pinky this nice short distance and going back, 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 back. I'm just pulling my pinky back. That's it. And then I'm popping my wrist down. Pinky back, wrist down. Pinky back, wrist down. All right. Now that's going to be your, see, down, pinky back, wrist down, pinky back and wrist down. That's the full molar. When I switch into the When I switch into the, the, the mid-stroke molar area, that's when I switch my grip to more the middle finger and the thumb and, you know, again, holding the stick with all my fingers. You don't keep your fingers out and just all loose. And then I just lightly rest my pointer finger on the top of the stick, okay? And then I'm more in this type of a, a fluid stroke. And then the last sticking, the last grip, would be that low molar. Now this is when I'm totally focusing my grip, my fulcrum, on the thumb and forefinger. Now I'll open my hand just for example purposes, just to demonstrate. I don't want you to leave your hand open, but... It's such a nice light motion, but look. There's still that whole wave motion in my form. So when I put my whole hand around it, I get better control of it. Okay, so we want to do some exercises. 
again, we just don't grab the sticks and jump into it. We've got to talk about our grip and our positioning. Now, you know, I'm a stickler for when we are practicing, really practicing behind the set. I don't want us slouching. I don't want us sitting this way. I don't want us hanging out this way. I want you to get yourself up straight, get yourself balanced and get yourself focused. Get your feet flat on the floor, roll your shoulders back and bring them down. Puff your chest out a little bit and relax down. Pick your arms up, get your sticks, your elbows should be just nicely relaxed and resting, grazing, lightly grazing the side of your shirt here, okay? Your biceps, they're touching. I feel them touching me, okay? My hands are here and it's a, a basically a diamond position. Belly button out all the way around, a diamond position. We're going to work in German grip. I'm not going to kick it personally into like the French grip and a lot of fingers until we're doing the molar sixteenths. Okay, when we're doing molar 16, that's when I'm going to kick it into French grip and I'm going to start applying more finger technique. But for the most part, we're going to work in German grip and a little bit of that relaxed hybrid grip. Now, German grip is not here with your hands like this. I, I try to tell people this all the time. This is not German grip. German grip, your hands are out. There is a natural curve in your hand here. And this part is at least fairly straight in the joint on your wrist, or it's even slightly curved in a little bit. This would be the back motion and down. German grip. So we're going to work in German grip. Now really focus on your hands. Feel your body. Feel the balance. Make sure everything's flat on the floor. Your butt's on the stool. Everything's there. Your shoulder's back. Your head's balanced. You're not leaning like this. You're not like this. You're not all like this because doing all these little things, not paying attention to all these little things are what makes your technique have faults in it. Okay, so you really want to focus on all this stuff there, drummers. All right, we're drummers. We're not just banging around and slapping around. It's technique. It's focus. It's discipline. All right. So in this position, all right, this is it. This is it. It's hand up. It's hand down. There's that pop. It's hand up. It's hand down. There's that pop. It's hand up. It's hand down. There's that pop. So we're going to work in German position. So please, I ask you to focus. Focus where you are. Focus that your head's not sticking all the way out. Get it back. Focus that you're not rounding your shoulders all out. Focus and pay attention to all these things so you get a nice, good, even. Okay, really nice. Now, we do some exercises, all right? I'm not a traditional grip player. We'll save that lesson for another day. But it's the same thing if you do play traditional grip. You come down, the butt of the stick comes up and the elbow comes out. You come down, butt of the stick comes up and the elbow comes out. You come down, butt of the stick comes up, elbow comes out. And it is technically the same thing with the elbow with the right hand in match grip, okay? So let's go back to match grip because that's how I play. So if we come down, the butt of the stick and the elbow come out. Butt of the stick and the elbow come out. And that's where you get that second stroke. It drops. It drops. It drops. It drops. But instead of letting it just drop lightly, assist it. That's the other thing that many, many people don't tell you with the Mola technique is that second note. You come down and you come up. Assist it. You can use your fingers. You can use that rebound and momentum to create a little more power and get that evenness of your note. So really, really pay attention to your technique and how you're applying, applying that second note. Don't let it just spontaneously happen because you think the first note's going to give it to you for free. It doesn't work like that. You've got to work for it. Okay, so your single molar is basically your common eighth note hi-hat groove. 
How many times have you done this sitting behind your set? On your hi-hat. Right? You don't sit at your hi-hat and go. You don't go. Who plays like that? You create that fluid motion, right? And you bring the, the when you want to get it faster, you don't go harder and apply more power. You control and focus those muscles and all that motion, that fluid big, over-exaggerated, this is my DVD, here's the Mola Technique motion that has wrecked the Mola Technique for hundreds of drummers. You bring that motion way, way, way down to a control technique. That's your Mola technique, okay? So let's start talking about some Mola singles, Mola doubles, Mola triplets, and Mola sixteenths, because that's what we're going to go over for your exercises, okay? But we're going to do it the right way. All right, everybody? Let's do some exercises. <laughs> 